Greetings, fellow Star Trek fans. I've got an amazing, very anticipated item to show you today. I'm very psyched about this because I ordered, I pre-ordered this back in late January, early February, and it was a birthday gift. Well, I got it myself, and then it turned out to be a birthday gift for my wife, and I've been waiting for it ever since. I'm talking about Eagle Moss. They came out with the Build the Enterprise NCC-1701D with electronics. And they were pretty smart when they did it because it's going to be very expensive. But they figured that instead of only a few Star Trek fans being able to afford it, they could do it as a kit and send it out and do smaller amounts each month for each kit and work it over a longer period of time. So that way there everybody gets to buy the kit so I finally got it so I'm very excited to present to you guys and get it up over here this is Eagle Moss collection the Star Trek build and this is part one the part numbers that come with it now because I pre-ordered I get the um, the advertised gifts that they had said on their website and you can see this is from Eagle Moss and that's in Indiana I'm sorry the camera is going out of focus but without further ado we got to get this over to the model desk and I'll open it up and I'll show you guys what's inside of it all right let's get this open Got the packing slip. And let me show you guys what's in the box. The print packing shipment, magazine, boost, and poster. CMC Star Trek Enterprise D build up issue 001, issue 002, and the pre order pin badges. And you can see it was $4.95. So, let's move on. Just dying to see what's in here. And oh my goodness. Right off the bat. You can see the absolutely <laughs> spectacular nacelle. Oh my goodness. And you can see the blue. The warp engines, you can see the Bassard collector. Oh my, this is USS Enterprise NCC 1701D. And this is part two, or part kit number two. You can see the writing on the back. And this is a 2020 release. So Let's see. What else is in here? Oh. <laughs> now, you know when they say 27 inches long, you're like, well, whatever, 27 inches. It doesn't seem that big. Look at the size of the bridge. This is going to be, oh, my goodness. Look at the bridge components. see the lighting while the clear parts the windows that will be lighted and I'm thinking that's the bridge right there look at that and this is one all right so that's one <clears throat> and what is what else do we got we got a box I'm thinking this is the pins
the next generation Star Trek USS Enterprise NCC 1701D. You can see the United Federation of Planets logo. The Hero Collection. And it's a little flip box and it opens up. And you can see it's got the pins inside. Very nice. Let me take them out for you. And put the box aside. You can see, hopefully the high definition camera will get these. You can see the, it's got the logo, the Delta logo and the galaxy behind it. Galaxy class starship, USS Enterprise and the NCC 1701D. Beautiful. So those were the free gifts that came with this shipment. And it's because I had pre-ordered that I had gotten these. So let me put them back in the box and put them aside on the back. You can see StarTrek.com. And it's from Hero. So that's a nice little thank you for pre-ordering. So we'll put that aside and there's a couple of, well, that's all that's left in here and now our books. So let me put the box aside. Very nice. You can see the part number. And because I pre ordered. One of the gifts that I'll be getting is actually going to be a folder to put all the books into that I, that I receive. All right, the first thing that I noticed that fell out life size. This is actually going to be a life size representation of the actual model. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm all giddy. This is amazing. This is going to be a lot bigger than what I thought it was going to be. All right, guys, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to lay it out on the floor to show you the scale of this thing. Okay, so I laid the poster out on the floor, and this is the actual size of the model. Now, I know they said 27 inches long, and as you can see by the tape measure, it is 27 inches long. For some reason, I wasn't expecting it just to be, it just seems so big. In retrospect, let me see, where did I put the thousand? I've got a 1-1000 model of the Enterprise D. Let me put it on the side. So to give you a little bit of a comparison, that's 1-1000. So this one could be... I don't know, one, one six hundred, one seven fifty scale. Am I close, or am I just totally butchering it? Um, I always made the joke. I'd love for them to do the actual eleven foot studio model, and that would have been wonderful. But this is going to be a large model, and I love the fact that they came with the poster, that they wanted you guys to see the finished product. You can see the front. Which she's coming head on. I just love it. All right, let's go back to the kit. All right, so this is a pretty big size poster, and I'm looking very much forward to having the whole model done. So let's put this aside. Now, the things you get, you get a couple of different books. Um, this one says one. 
And this one says, introducing your model. You can see some beautiful pictures of the model. A beautiful head on. So let me show you guys what's in this. You got that gorgeous picture of the model. And this is your model. Diecast replica. The model is 27 and a half inches. Diecast replica of the Galaxy Class USS Enterprise NCC 1701-D. It is based on careful study of the different studio models that were used in filming. It is designed so the saucer and the star drive section can separate. It and it is packed with working lights. The exterior has all the details you'd expect, including phaser strips, transporter emitters, antimatter loading hatches, and the captain's yacht. The interior of the ship is packed with lighting, as on the original studio model. It illuminates a section of windows. Easy to build. All the parts click or screw together. There is no need for any glue or paint. You can see a nice shot of her departing. The model has been designed to look good from any angle, allowing you to study the Enterprise in detail. Light up engines. The impulse engines, Bassard collectors, and warp nacelles all light up. You wouldn't, wouldn't expect any less, especially for something this expensive. A display mount. The model is designed to be displayed on a model mount that works the same way as the version that was used in the original motion control system. The main deflector dish lights up from the inside. The warp nacelles, <clears throat> like I told you earlier, each warp nacelle is a separate unit with its own power supply. The metal hull. The ship's exterior is made up of metal panels that click or screw together. So this thing's going to be nice and durable and it's going to last forever. The RCS thrusters. The model has all the detail you'd expect on a Starfleet ship, including RCS thrusters on the outer edge of the saucer. And the pre-painted. All the parts are pre-painted with even the tiniest decals in place. So it's literally just take the pieces and screw them together. Um, you can see it looks like it has aztec -ing. so I'll be in a hurry to get pieces of the, uh, the primary hull. And it's talking about the studio model. The makers of Star Trek The Next Generation actually used three different models of the Enterprise-D, when all of them are subtly different. ILM built a detailed six-foot version that could separate and a less elaborate two-foot version that could be used for more distant shots. Star Trek The Next Generation's third season, these were both replaced with a four-foot version and had raised surface details and slightly thicker saucer section allow for the inclusion of the 10 forward which had, not, had been introduced in the season before. Our model is a combination of all three models. See, I'm sorry when I, I had told you guys the 11-foot model but I'm thinking of the um, the Star Trek, the next generation, the refit, uh, the NCC-1701 um, was an 11-foot model. And I believe the one at the Smithsonian as well. I could be mistaken, but you can see them working on the, uh, the studio filming model. The original six-foot version of the Enterprise-D had a thinner saucer section and a completely smooth surface. This was the only version of the model that could be separated into two parts. The six-foot version was refurbished and repainted for its appearance in Star Trek Generations, when ILM also bought a much larger model of the saucer for the crash sequence. And lovers of the Enterprise D, like me, I don't want to think about the crash sequence. You can see a picture of Gene Roddenberry with the model. This is a beautiful model and it's such good quality that we could have used it for some of the shots we created for Star Trek The Next Generation. Nowadays, visual effects are mostly done with computer animated imaging, and I don't care for that. This reminds me of the incredible models we used to work with for traditional effects, which were built by master craftsmen. 
Um, I'm not a big fan of computer-generated animation. I think the ships look fake. Um, I love the models. Um, my favorite model is the Enterprise, the refit, especially when she was shown in Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. I think that has the most absolutely gorgeous shots of the Enterprise in, the, in all the films. And the, the computer, it just doesn't look real. It looks fake. It, it looks, I don't know, I just, you can tell the difference. That's just my opinion. The matching colors. Establishing the exact color of the Enterprise D is not an easy task. The original models were painted in relatively strong duck egg blue colors with a green Aztec pattern. But the VFX team altered this look to a more gray when they processed their shots. The forefoot model was painted in a gray scheme that was more in keeping with its look as, for the pos as far as possible. We have tried to match the look of the ship as it appeared on screen, where the ambient light also had an effect on its final appearance. And you can see that beautiful soft light hitting her. The model has been carefully painted to match the appearance on screen, with particular reference for the high-definition remastered versions of Star Trek The Next Generation. And the saucer separates. Saucer separation, one of the Enterprise D's most memorable features was its ability to separate into two parts. Our model has been designed to do this. You can separate the saucer from the star drive section so that you can display them separately. The lights in the saucer and star drive sections have independent controls so both parts can be illuminated. The Enterprise first demonstrated its ability to separate an encounter at far point. You guys remember, Admiral Reich, uh, excuse me, Commander Riker was new to the ship. He had just been assigned to the Enterprise. And when the two halves rendezvoused, Captain Picard instructed him to manually engage in the rejoining of the primary and secondary hulls. Lights and the scale. The model is packed with working lights. The windows throughout the ship are illuminated and navigation with navigation lights. The main deflector and the impulse and warp engines all light up as well. The saucer and the star drive sections have separate power sources and controls so they can be independently operated. You can see some very lovely pictures of her. Beautiful. What a beautiful ship. Easy to build. Building the model couldn't be any simpler. All the parts are simply click and screw into place. The wiring is designed with push it, push fit connectors and it's clearly explained. You'll even be provided with a battery pack and a circuit board so that you can test the lighting as you go. And that's what we'll be working on today, I believe. The finished model is a staggering 27 and a half inches long with a metal frame. Subscribers will also receive a display stand which fits into the bottom of the star drive section the same way it did on the original shooting model. Beautiful. And the collector's guide. Every issue comes with a simple instructions that show you exactly how to put the pieces of your model together. The instructions couldn't be easier to follow. Every part is labeled and color-coded. The building process is incredibly straightforward. All the pieces are pre-painted with all the decals in place. You simply clip or screw them together. There's no need for any glue. You won't need any tools that are more complicated than a screwdriver. And you could see when I put the pictures up, one of the kits that I showed you already had a screwdriver in it. And then behind the scenes, always our favorite little goodies of Star Trek. Your collector's guide is packed with inside information and unique insights for the people who made Star Trek The Next Generation. It starts by looking at how Andy Probert designed the Enterprise D. and features an in-depth interview with its original production artwork. Later issues will examine the different finishing filming models in depth. The design of the Enterprise's interior and the secrets behind the visual effects. and the episode guides. 
Starting with issue 3, the magazine will provide in-depth guides to making of every episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, featuring interviews with the writers, directors, and stars, original production artwork, and rare behind-the-scenes photographs. It will be it will build into the ultimate reference work to be televised adventures of Captain Picard and his crew. And on the back you have some more pictures of the beautiful Enterprise NCC 1701-D. And I apologize for my shaky hand. This is going to be amazing. And when I pre-ordered, I also got the extra package where I got the bonus with the um, the lighted base that goes with it because it does come with a base kind of like a triangle base and the one I got is more of a rectangular base with the LEDs that lights up so that's the first magazine the thing that we had gotten so let's move on to the actual I would think this is the actual manual it says one, and it's much thicker. And we'll start showing you guys. Your ship parts at a glance, the assembly instructions, and designing the D. <clears throat> Building bridges, lost generations. You can see a nice schematic of the Enterprise. So, stage one, and it shows you the parts, and we'll go over that when, we, um, when I open it up for you. You can see all the parts that are going to come in it, and a list of the part numbers. And you can see on the bottom it actually has a screwdriver. And we go to the second part, or stage two. And it looks like it's only part or one half of the Bassard Collector. And on the bottom, you can see the parts list. <clears throat> Stage one assembly. You can see some nice pictures. The main bridge module, the sensors, and B deck or deck two. The key, illustration provided, and build tips. Now, step A, and we're going to go through this. Step B, you can see. Step C. If you want, you can pause the video to read the steps. Because I'm doing it in high definition, you should be able to read when you pause. So for more of you guys who really prefer the challenge of the model building, this might not be there, but it's still amazing. Um, I'm working on currently the, um, the NCC 1701 refit as seen in Star Trek The Motion Picture, 1350 scale from Polar Lights. And that, that's proving to be a very time consuming and difficult model because I'm doing the Aztecing I'm actually painting the Aztecing on as I go and that takes a lot of patience so that's a pretty um, if they would come out with something like this for the refit oh that would be just amazing but obviously we don't have that much room in our house where they can't do every ship like this or let me put it this way we don't have enough room or financial resources more than likely to be able to afford everything that they do or I have room to put it in. Let's see. Now we're already moving on to stage two. You can 
can see the schematic. The field protector, the facade collector, and then the cell, the upper part, anyway. And if you guys get this this kit, the introductory kit was only four ninety five, and it included free shipping. And this is kind of give you, you know, a little bit of an idea of what to expect. I'm curious on how many people get this part, the four ninety five introductory package, and actually go on to do the whole ship. I'm thinking that most of us wouldn't get this in the first place unless we were fans of Star Trek, The Next Generation, and the Enterprise D. But you know, financial situations, we are living in a pandemic and times are hard right now, so curious on how to see uh, how many people would actually go through the whole thing to the end. I, for one, hope I can. So that was it. That, those were the pieces, and those were the instructions to the pieces. So. We're going to move on, and I'm going to tell you guys about the designing the Enterprise D. It shows you when the original Enterprise and its big screen counterpart already instantly recognizable icons, it took the design genius of Andrew Probert to create a new ship that could carry its legacy while blazing into its own warp trail. And I'll let you, if you want to pause that and read it. And it shows you concept drawing. Beautiful. And I love the Enterprise D. That's my second favorite ship. I love the Enterprise, the original Enterprise, the NCC 1701. And I include the refit because that's basically the same ship. And I can kind of throw the A in there. Um, even though the A was the Yorktown, there's speculation about that, but I believe the A was the Yorktown. You can see more concept designs. But the Enterprise D is my second favorite. And you know, I also love the Enterprise C. That kind of a bridge that they put where you went for more of the constitutional class starship that kind of moved through, and the Enterprise C is the ambassador class starship. And moving up to what the D is, is the Galaxy class starship. Uh, she's just beautiful. And I love the C because I love blue. That's why I'm very fond of the Enterprise NCC 1701-A. <clears throat> and I kind of consider that the refit and the original. Same design, basically. So all of those lumped together are my favorites. And then you get the Enterprise D. And more concept drawings. Drawn on December 1st, 1986, this sketch of the new USS Enterprise traveling at speed was hanging in Probert's Paramount office later that week when it caught the eye of the next generation story editor, David Gerald. Note that the detachable battle section is delineated on top of the saucer. And you see the absolutely gorgeous, my favorite. The original big screen Enterprise with its saucer and engine struts slanting in the opposite directions as depicted by Probert for the motion picture. And I absolutely love that ship. I'm working on the 1350 scale of her right now. The most beautiful spaceship ever to grace our television screens or big screens, in my opinion. You can see some more Enterprise D concepts. With the exterior design concept approved in principle, Probert drew up the more finished presentation drawing of the USS Enterprise NCC 1701 D on December 8, 1986. Very graceful looking lady. Robert working on his bridge design for the motion picture, the Katinga class Klingon cruiser. More just 
scale photos. Well, I don't know if it's in scale, but more sketches of the Enterprise D from her starboard side. And building the bridge. Discover how Star Trek The Next Generation senior illustrator Andrew Probert created the Enterprise D iconic command hub. Dated December 2nd, 1986, Proverbs' earliest ideas for the bridge, including a T-shaped station shared by the captain, con, and operations officer with other stations, a sunken outer ring. The captain's office includes private sleeping quarters. Drawn on December 3, 1986, Probert's earliest detailed bridge design has an unused emergency stations on either side of the main viewer and the turbo lifts to port and starboard. A large central turbo lift was intended to link the main bridge to the battle bridge in emergencies and is flanked by opening briefing and office nooks with sleeping quarters for the captain marked in green and shared bathroom colored blue behind. So how many times have you guys actually had a blueprint where you saw bathrooms <laughs> on the Enterprise? That's amazing. Obviously, everything is going to have a bathroom. No matter how advanced the species, you still have to, well, you know. All right, I thought no more toggle switches. More detailed plans for the seating arrangements for the bridge are dated December 3rd, 1986, the top, and December 4th, 1986, the bottom. They include ideas for a coffee table with the pop-up displays and curving couches with duty stations and nestled chairs built into their backs. A nice picture. Looks like the lounge. Two different takes on a bridge with an upper level in the first from December 4th, 1986 above. The elegant floating staircase curves up to mez mezzanine with a viewing gallery, which can be accessed by a turbo lift on the other side of the dock, or deck, excuse me. Down below, December 8th, turbo lifts on both sides lead up to the duty stations while crew members sit with their backs to the main viewer. Both designs feature a large conference table in the center of the lower floor. Interesting. Also from uh, December 9th, 1986, the bridge was a single story affair. Once more here, more bench seating replaces the large conference table, although the overhead still views smaller table in front of the captain's chair. The overhead view also shows a transporter room behind the bridge. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm used to the way it is now. Um, the images seen the first appearance of the segmented ceiling, ramped rear section, and curved divider feature in the final set. Let's see the bottom. The version of the main bridge from December 11th, 1986, is notable for having no standalone command chair. The area around the con and ops is slightly sunken in their recessed nooks for the coffee breaks and general relaxation on both sides of the main viewer. An overhead view from December 18th has a space for separate conference room or proposed lounge area behind the bridge. The dark blue area is a transporter room leading to the hangar deck. And you can see what looks like <clears throat> the 
concept for the more finished look of what we have now. Robert had always argued that the bridge should be inside the ship, where it was not exposed to danger. A drawing dated December 19, 1986, shows the bridge in associated rooms he was designing at the top of the Cobra Head in the Star Drive section. The docking port and the windows behind the bridge echo similar designs in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Here. This highly finished rendering of February 6, 1987, Probert captures all the elements that would be approved for the final bridge design soon after. With the new uniform design still to be finalized, Probert's monochrome crew owes more to the look of 1979 Star Trek The Motion Picture. Lost Generation. This is a different article. For a few weeks in the summer of 1986, Star Trek The Next Generation looked set to be the adventures of a cadet crew and a holographic former captain. Vulcan and, humans, and human cadets on board Starfleet training vessel face unexpected challenges in the 1998 Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode, Valiant. And this is iconic from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Proposed teaser for Strangless Pilot echoed the Kobayashi Maru test that opens the big screen adventure in The Wrath of Khan. Savick is all upset because there was no way to win, and Captain Kirk well, Admiral Kirk was saying that a no-win situation is something that everyone will be faced with. You can see the Enterprise D. The starship called the USS Odyssey later appeared in the season two finale of Deep Space Nine in 1994 as a galaxy class vessel. It was essentially identical to the Enterprise D from the version of Star Trek The Next Generation. And we recognize her from Star Trek Discovery. The shock death of the seasoned captain whose protege, second in command, an orphan of the Vulcan father figure has clear, albeit coincidental, parallels with the story acts of Philippa Gorgianow and Michael Burnham in Star Trek Discovery. So you kind of like her in the alternate universe as the Emperor better? Let me see some iconic pictures from my favorite series, the original series. Make sure there's no glare for you. The planet Organia was the site of another Federation Klingon peace accord in the original series episode, Eren of Mercy, where both sides were well ready to fight. They had their fleets, and the Organians put a stop to it. They simply would not let them fight. Once an, a Starfleet officer or crew member tried to hit a Klingon, they would feel intense heat when they touched their bodies. And that was, in, that was later to reveal to them that it was not only in that area, but it was everywhere in the universe. So the Organians actually put their point across. In this picture, the first episode of Deep Space Nine also features an ill-fated Vulcan captain whose first officer goes to be on to be the series lead. Despite the significant role in Stranger's outline, Romulans do not actually appear in the next generation until the final episode of season one. Here's some more wonderful pictures, mixing the, the iconic, wonderful original series. This is when, um, I think it was called, well, let me just read it. 
Yep, for Relics, guest starring original series actor James Doohan as Scotty in 1960s Bridge was recreated using a combination, combination of old footage and newly built pie wedge of the set. Remember, they actually found him in stasis in the transporter beam that was put in loop. And Jordy was able to bring him back. And on the bottom, on Deep Space Nine, Ingenious use of our archive footage allowed Captain Sisko to meet young Captain Kirk in Trials and Tribulations from 1996. And that was really cool. If you get, they actually included that on Star Trek, the original series, um, the collector's DVDs that I have. That episode of Deep Space Nine is on it, and it's pretty good. Pretty cool. And that is the introductory magazines. You can see the beautiful photo of the Enterprise. So, that being said, let's move on to actually unpacking the kits. All right, so this is one. You can see the awesome bridge area. All right, so let me open it up to the steps that we need, and we'll build it. All right, we got stage one, the assembly. So first thing I'm going to do is we'll take everything out. I'll take everything out of the package, and I'll show you what it comes with. So let's peel back the cardboard backing. And there's a plastic tray inside. You can see the pieces. All right. <clears throat> First thing I can't help but notice is this amazing piece. And it's metal. This is um, this one appears to be feel like plastic. By the way, here's the screwdriver that I was telling you about that I had noticed. This is a Phillips screwdriver. You can see the wiring, the clips, the alligator clips, similar to the um, Polar Lights kit, the lighting kits from the Enterprise and the um, different, uh, the Klingon Katinga class, and you can see the light bulbs. And this appears to be more lights. Yep. You can see that looks like to be one. There's four lights in this one. And let's see. We've got another level. So this is, I'm thinking, is B deck. You can see where it's going to light up. And I hope you can see on my big clumsy hands. I'm not sure what that is. I'll put that aside. You can see the emitters, so the thrusters. I 
hope this the camera picks it up for you. Let's see, what is this? Looks like an insert that goes under the bridge area. And here's the a ring. And like I had read to you, everything is pre-painted, so there's no need for any of that. And this looks like the, the rear half or the aft end of B deck. I guess this is going to hold the plastic lights. And you can see an envelope, CM, that has the screws. And there's more screws labeled CP. And the final envelope is labeled AP. You can see another plastic part, clear. windows and what's left we got the bridge or what I think is the bridge and more of these black parts plastic pieces One there. And one there. And that's everything that's in the first part. Okay, so let me show you guys what's in part two. The NCC 1701. You can see the front. Got that beautiful big meaty Bassard collector with the top half anyway. So let's take this part off. Let's see these parts, beautiful. And again, just like the other one, they come in a, like a plastic tray. So let's go ahead and we'll go to, let's see, part two. All right. Let's check out this big, beautiful Bassard collector piece. Absolutely gorgeous, and it's metal. Look at that. Look at the Aztecing on it, guys. Beautiful. Got a nice big plastic piece for the clear, which is the frame. Gonna go in like that. And look at that beautiful Bassard collector. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And we got the the engines. Let's see this is probably the starboard side because it's the bigger piece to go up against to a butt against the Bassard collector. And this one would be the port side, I'm thinking. The size of this is just amazing. I love it.
see. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And this appears to be, if I can get the, there we go, I can get it out, the bottom part of the Bassard Collector, or towards the Bassard Collector. Again, look at the aztec -ing. Beautiful. I hope the camera picks it up. Looks like you can see the blue, the green. You know, all the work that I'm doing on the model right now for the 1350 scale, it, it I don't want to lessen it. Um, it, it it's just so hard. And there, all this industrial pre-made stuff just makes it look so easy. But I'm in a hurry for both models to be uh, finished. The Enterprise that I'm working on, the refit, will be done a lot sooner than this one will. <laughs> I hope. And there's a small... Not quite sure what that is. Looks like a one of the beacon lights that goes up on top. And like in the last one, we have envelopes with the letters, AM, the screws. BM. And lastly, we have the small envelope with the letters AP. No, not Adrian Peterson. The screws. <laughs> and that, my friends, um, I've decided to do the actual build for you guys in another video because just the unboxing on everything and explaining it to you, um, this video is very long. I'm, I'm thinking it's an hour or pretty close to it, and I don't want people to, well, to get tired of watching. So this video, I'm going to show you everything that came in it. So I'm going to start the build. The next video that I do, we're going to put everything together and I'll show you how it goes together and I'll show you the finished pieces of those parts um, from kit one. And I'll talk to you guys very soon and I thank you for watching.